And if you were going to name one thing that kills people with hemochromatosis, it's cirrhosis. And some people can get liver cancer on top of that cirrhosis. Now the good news is that with phlebotomy, scarring of the liver can go away. And this is a very exciting finding. And we've done serial liver biopsies in several of my patients and seen people that look like they have cirrhosis and after three years of weekly phlebotomy, it's gone away. Now you've got a lot of iron overload if you've got three years of weekly phlebotomy. The record at our center is eight years of weekly phlebotomy. So that person had a ferritin close to 50,000 when they started. And you know, you know, this is another important point to realize. People come to the clinic and they're just terrified about their ferritin at 600. And I tell them, you know, that's normal in Australia. Well, you know, they've, they've already, you know, signed their will and they've got the cremation package and they're on the Harry Krishna diet and, you know, that's really not that high a number. So the problems in hemochromatosis start to go up when you're into the thousands. This is kind of illustrated on, some of the, on, on this slide here. But notice here that I've added this yellow track and the red track. So not everybody is on this escalator moving towards cirrhosis and death. And that's one of the things that we discovered in the AIR study, is that people are on different slopes of escalator. And some people are on the flat slope. But it's been very difficult to prove that phlebotomy improves symptoms. Now I told you that we have shown that it improves liver on biopsy. That's one of the strongest arguments in favor. That if you've got scarring and uh, that scarring can go away with phlebotomy. That's probably the biggest thing we can hold up as good evidence to continue with phlebotomy. But when I have a patient now who says, ah, I'm sick of this phlebotomy, I, I've got sore veins and I have to drive two hours to get here and I don't have a car and all this kind of stuff, uh, I don't say, you know, well, let's go on chelation or whatever. I just say, well, let's just stop it and see what happens. And you know, the number of people I've stopped, not much happens. Like, they're not going up and up. Many of them stay where they are. Some of them are going down. And this raises the question of maintenance. This is an old concept that's never been proven, that people need maintenance therapy. And my mentor, Dr. Valberg, his practice was not to do maintenance on anybody. So people got bled down to a low number, and that number of 50 is completely arbitrary. Uh, but the reason that they chose a low number was because they thought that most people would be rising when they stopped. But he showed me, and we published this, that most of his patients were not rising after they stopped, particularly women. So that's one of the questions that came up from abroad. Uh, you know, why is it that their ferritin is not going up without maintenance? That's the normal, particularly women. Now, one of the things that has been shown is that hemochromatosis people have more joint replacements than the general population. That would be hip and knee. So that suggests that um, there's a significant morbidity to the joints with hemochromatosis. But we're not even sure if that could have been prevented by phlebotomy. You know, many people say things like, well, if I, if I had been diagnosed early, I wouldn't have had that joint replacement. Maybe. We're not even sure. I have a patient that never had iron overload his whole life, C282Y homozygote. By age 38, he had both his knees replaced. Remember, I started off by telling you that the HFE protein looks like an immunoglobulin, which is often seen in some of those arthritic diseases. And the hemochromatosis gene is close to some of these immune regulatory genes. So we're not even sure that it's the iron that causes the arthropathy. And that's probably why many people during phlebotomy don't notice an improvement in their arthritis. In fact, some people say it's worse. The oldest way of monitoring therapy was looking at hemoglobin alone to see if you become anemic. 
Now, you're supposed to become anemic during phlebotomy therapy, a little bit. That's how it works. Because if you're anemic, it sends a signal to your body, like hepcidin, that you need to make new iron, or make new blood. To make new blood, it needs iron. So it sucks iron out of your liver and other tissues to make the new blood. So you want a little bit of anemia, but not so much that you're just dragging around. What, so, what number would be concerning? Uh, we stop phlebotomy in people that are going under 100. 